For this project, I started with a 29 by 10 inch cabinet door that I had actually gotten from my own kitchen because we had to have some doors replaced. So um, this, what I went ahead and did was took painter's tape and made a horizon line and painted the very bottom under that tape a dark blue. Then I taped off the top area also and I painted that a real pretty light blue for the sky. So the bottom's the water, the top is the sky. Then after I took all the tape off, I had to do a little bit of touch up for the horizon line there. And then I took some lime green paint, some white paint, and maybe even some uh, yellow and painted a little bit more in the sky to just add a little more interest and in color. I might have even added some of the dark blue that was down at the uh, bottom for the water to it in the next step here. And then after this, I started painting some clouds. And you'll see my son here in the background because he's a better painter than I am. So he was giving me some tips and kind of helping me a little bit with this. Um, so what he told me to do was for the clouds to paint some gray first and then uh, dab white on top of it. And here you can see him helping me a little bit <laughs> and telling me what to do. And I do end up with four clouds, and I think they turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? The next thing I did was took some of the dark blue paint from the bottom, mixed it with a little bit of white paint, and then painted along the bottom of the water, leaving the dark strip of horizon line at the very top. So next I wanted to put some white birds in the sky. So what I did was I took some white glass and I used my nippers and I just nipped very small, long pieces of the white glass. And you should nip as many as you can so that you have quite a few choices because they don't all turn out just how you um, or how you need them to be to make the birds and then you need to choose the pieces that are kind of pointy at one end a little bit thicker at the end and stand up on their own on their sides just like this one is here for the next step i used an old vase that i picked up at a garage sale i thought it was so pretty and it wasn't until i started breaking it up that i realized that it's just painted on the inside. I thought it was that color all the way through. So this can still be used for glass art, of course, but um, it cannot be tumbled. So I'm using this to make sails on sailboats. And um, you can see the $2 price tag. I got it at a garage sale. But when you look at the bottom of it, it says it was from Walmart. So it's originally a cheap vase from Walmart. And so um, on some of these, I go ahead and I draw out the sail and try to nip around the edges and some I just wing it and you know try to cut some triangles to look like sails for a sailboat and as you know with glass sometimes it can be unpredictable sometimes it breaks the way you want it and sometimes not and so here I am just using the nipper tool going around the edge of what I've drawn and yes it does um, sometimes it'll um, crack break straight and sometimes you get uh, quite a jagged edge from the nippers. So I continue on nipping away at this glass till I get a bunch of sails. And here's a perfect example of not breaking the way you want it to. So here I go again, I draw it out and I go to nip it with the nipper tool. And look how thick that glass is. It's thinner at the top and um, look at that, it just broke randomly, but it just happened to break into a perfect sail. So <laughs> I continue on nipping away at the glass and um, I do end up with quite a few sails. Next, I take the pieces out to the garage and I use my little sander and sand down the rough edges on each of them. The marker marks will come off with rubbing alcohol. Then I take them in the house, uh, wash them with soap and water, dry them, and move on to the next glass. 
So here I have a white bowl or jar or something and I go ahead and I take the top rim off it because it's very uneven and I want to use the flat part to make some more white sails. So I get a large piece and I kind of make it into an even strip and I start cutting back and forth, back and forth, making triangles. So I just want to show you this part in slow motion. You see how that piece of glass is stuck to the box? It flew in that direction because of the way I was holding the nippers. So when you hold the nippers sideways like this, the glass will fly to the side. If you hold the nippers down like this while you're cutting, the glass will fly down into the box. It's just easier for me to show it on camera holding it in this way. I don't know if you can see that. That one didn't come out quite right, but I just went ahead and nipped it into shape and uh, continued doing this until I got as many as I wanted. And you can see by what I'm putting on the uh, box over there that I got, I did end up with quite a few of the white ones. And then I went through the green glass. I wanted to use the green glass for the bottom of the boat. I used my nipper tool to cut a bunch of the green glass so that it was the shape of the bottom of the boat. And I thought it would look real pretty with the uh, color in the sails. And then I took all this glass that I collected and I put it in my tumbler. So, um, the green glass, the white glass, and then you'll see up there all the colored glass. I have a pile of glass in the garage that I keep on throwing pieces in that when I'm going to tumble some glass I'll throw in and this is just happens to be glass that I've either spray painted or used UV resin on it to color it and I don't like it so I'm just going to tumble it and turn it back into clear glass so that it doesn't get thrown out you know it's still good glass and all you have to do is tumble it and that all comes off of it it's really great so, and of course, the uh, sailboat striped glass I cannot put in there, unfortunately, because the paint will come off of it. So I put this all in the tumbler, I put some grit in it, I cover it with water, and I end up tumbling this glass for two nights. Normally, I would tumble it longer. Really didn't want to wait a whole week. Now, that blue glass I can't tumble either. That has like a spray coating on it, an iridescent spray coating, and that would come off. So this is the 36 grit that I use to tumble my glass and um, I kind of want to tumble it faster so I put a little bit extra in. So next I started setting up all the sailboats. I did put a little bit of the glass at the bottom at first because I just wanted to see what it would look like but I do end up taking the glass off and putting that on after I've put the resin on. <clears throat> because if you're going to be using um, the crushed glass it's easier to spread the resin without the crushed glass on it. It's actually easier to spread the resin without any glass on it. So the resin I'm using for this project is the J. Diction resin, the 24-hour cure. And I didn't realize what I was doing until after I poured the resin. So I've been doing some experimenting and we found that the long, the fast curing resins are not good on canvas. They do fine on glass. And I believe the reason they do fine on glass and they, you know, don't create fish eyes like they do on the canvas is because when you're doing glass art, you have a um, frame around it, a perimeter that holds the resin in place like a reservoir. So you typically put a little bit, or at least I do, I typically put more resin on it. And this, even though it's a, like a canvas, it does have the frame around it, so it is holding the resin in like a reservoir, and I probably have enough resin in that it's covering everything. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's the only reason that I can find that this did not cause any fish eyes on this particular project. So I went ahead and I spread the resin out with my little uh, resin tool. I used my kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles. And again, um, what I've been doing lately is I've been letting, after I set the resin up, or mix the resin up, I set it out and I let it set 10 to 15 minutes so that the bubbles rise to the top and that some of them dissipate. And um, the other thing that I've been doing 
which I've been doing right along, is I always go back every 10 minutes and check the project, re-hit it with the torch, and again, look for more bubbles and residue. A lot of times after you come back the second time, some of the residue will rise. I don't know why, but I seem to see it more when I come back in the second time. It's really important that you get down close to your project and look at it closely. Here I'm just sprinkling a little bit of the crushed glass that they have all the time up at Michael's. It's crushed reflective glass on top of each of the clouds. And then I also have the crushed reflective blue glass that I sprinkle along the very bottom of the project. This has to be on a level surface. It has to sit overnight. It's in your best interest to cover it with a dust cover. This particular resin says that it sets best or cures best at temperatures between 75 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. All resins are different. You need to read the directions for the resin that you are using. Hi everyone. So I finished my project. Everything except for I need to, where is it? Over here where the doorknob from the cabinet was, I need to put something right there. I'm thinking of like a little anchor, a jewelry anchor or something to finish it off. So anyway, I really love the way this turned out. I'm filming from this angle because it's still dark out now. And um, <clears throat> I have every single light in the house on, but when I was filming from over there, it just seemed too dark. So I hope this is bright enough and you can see it. There's my cat crying. Um, <clears throat> so the only thing that I wanted to talk about with this was, um, so I'm so used to doing glass on glass that I use a lot of translucent glass, translucent spray paint, you know, the faux sea glass. And I wasn't thinking, I mean, I think this still turned out okay, but um, I wasn't thinking. So these are both opaque. And this is the translucent glass. And I wanna show you. So this is what it originally looked like. Can you see that? And this is what it would look like um, on a white background. And you see how dark it looks there. And th this is the same glass, you know, on a dark background. So I'm just gonna set this down for a second. So look at the difference. Same piece of glass, boy, you can hardly see it there. Um, I, I put resin over it on purpose so that you guys could see what the difference was. So you have to be careful if you're using the uh, translucent glass, you have to be careful what you're putting it on top of. And I've made this mistake before and um, I just wanted to save you guys, especially if you're using something really light like a pink or um, you know, a pink or a yellow, and then you pour resin over it, it could totally turn the blue behind it. So you could still see the bottoms of these sailboats, but um, it would probably be better if it maybe was more opaque <clears throat> and then it wouldn't uh, blend into the background. But I, I, I love the way it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed the project. I hope you learned something new. If you did enjoy the project, give it a thumbs up. That really helps the channel. If you enjoy the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.